Hello, it's time to return to our uh, Homestuck adventure, and I should probably deal with AIM, because it's going to be bouncing in the corner forever. Okay, so, last time on the last episode of Homestuck Z, we couldn't find our dad. He was somewhere in one of two rooms. Um, wow, this picture would look very confusing to somebody coming into it in the first glance. So, fathers being as fathers are, they're probably in their study. So, let us go into the study and see what happens. Ooh, this is nice. Got more um, more Harlequins and a very nice piano, but no, no piano bench. Some really interesting uh, mural. Two pretty nice hats. An umbrella. Another pipe. It looks like playing cards? Is that, wait a minute, that's a capture log card. They're actual physical cards? Seriously? I wonder what's in the safe. Probably like the end of the plot or something is like right in there. It's like, oh, it's the answer to everything. It's always in the safe. Let's look at Father's desk. Yep, those are playing cards. Um, I can't read that. Something Jester. Oh, I missed reading something. Hold on. It doesn't look like he's in here right now. Nothing important. Okay. On the desk, there is a deck of playing cards, one of your dad's pipes, the April issue of the Serious Jester magazine, and a stray capture log card. Ooh. There is also a can of peanuts on the desk. Ha ha, oh dad, you won't be filing for that one again anytime soon. A severe peanut allergy is a terrible affliction to cope with. Oh, That's kinda sad. Severe peanut allergies are pretty, um, pretty bad because anaphylactic shock sucks. So... Let's upgrade that costume. I wonder which hat. Mm, the bowler hat's a little too small. You saw the magician's hat with the bowler hat. This disguise is somewhat less funny, but a lot more distinguished looking. <laughs> Except it doesn't really fit over your awkward hair there, John. You and your awkward hair. Combine a second pipe with clever disguise. Your dad maintains numerous pipes around the household. A father without a pipe is like a strapping roughneck without a toothpick. That is to say, he is a rather piss-poor excuse for a roughneck, if you ask me. You'd rather not take the pipe, though. The first one tastes bad enough as it is. How you suffer for your comedy. I told you to check the pipe for tobacco. <sighs> You're too young for this stuff, John. Trust me. Trust me. So, the capture log card. Yes, this will be the perfect... The, the perfect... I can read. This will be perfect for expending the space in your Scylla... Capture log, capture log card. I'm just gonna facepalm for the next 20 minutes and that'll be my video for the day. Ooh, what is this S? What does S mean? Play haunting piano refrain. Oh my goodness, are those doodles on the wall? John, were you that little kid? Who drew on the walls? I bet you were. I did the same thing, except I did it with permanent makeup. Let's play that piano refrain. I honestly hope that's loud enough for you guys to hear. That's beautiful. John. I didn't know you had it in you. 
I'm impressed. That was really, really pretty. So many things just got added to the strange headcanon that has been developing ever since this started. I'm all right here, all of the feels. Play 52 pickup? Really? John, you just have a fetish for destroying everything your dad loves. You play the prankster's favorite card game, even though you are alone in the room, thus rendering it an especially foolish version of Solitaire. So stupid! Look at this mess! The peanut gallery over there sure is getting a kick out of it. You are allergic to their scorn. Okay, so John's allergic to peanuts? Or was- I thought it was Dad who was allergic to peanuts. I can't tell. Maybe they both are. Maybe it was like inherited or something. I don't know, but are peanut allergies inheritable? Interesting. Lots of things are interesting. I feel like a little bear sometimes. Look at those cards. I wonder if the cards are of any significance. I'm starting to think that everything is of significance. Um, I would know what they are if I could read them. I see an ace of diamonds. Seven of hearts. Four of spades. Six of hearts. Three of clubs. Uh, various face cards that I can't quite make out. Um, something of, of diamonds. And ten of hearts. I think that's nine? Nine of diamonds? Ten of hearts. And, um, something of clubs. I'm, I, I really can't see it too well. But yeah, they're, um, wait a minute, that's the Joker. So, was my Harley Quinn joke not too far off? Cool. Attempt to leave the house. Hmm. Oh, sorry, we got distracted by, um, television. <laughs> like most 13-year-old children. You go back into the living room and contemplate checking the mailbox outside. You think perhaps you should exhaust all possibilities before plunging headlong into a dad encounter. Your television is currently airing a commercial. Come, John. Be sucked into corporate America's mind games and persuasive advertisement. And there we get to see family pictures. John doesn't change facial expressions, and I'm guessing that John's black dad doesn't either. I rather like his trilby. I know several people who are going to be quite happy that I said the word at Trilby. So, let's go outside. Oh, I just noticed that the rug in there was, um, diamond patterned. Ooh, a telescope! Somebody's a stargazer. Astrology. Astrology and card suits. Big deal. Very big deal in here. You exit the house. Check mail. Predictably, the mailbox is empty. You have already been scooped You have already been scooped by your father. Was he referring to the mail? What? Scooped? Oh, looks like um sound thing. Hmm? What's going on here? Hmm. Wind chime? Oh, so this is a splash screen. Oh. I think I get it. The adventure has only just begun. The streets are empty. Wind skims the voids, keeping neighbors apart, as if grazing the hollow of a cut reed, or, say, a plundered mailbox. A familiar note is produced. It's the one desolation plays to keep its instrument in tune. It is your thirteenth birthday, and as with all twelve preceding it, something feels missing from your life. The game presently eluding you is only the latest sleight of hand in the repertoire of an unseen riddler, one to engender a sense not of mirth, but of lack. His coarse schemes are those less of a prankster than a common pickpocket. His riddle is absence itself. It is a mystery dispersing altogether, like the moon's faint reflection, with every 
with even one pebble of inquiry dropped in its black well. It is the most diabolical riddle of all. Absence diminishes little passions and increases great ones, as wind extinguishes candles and fans a fire. Walt Whitman. Yes, you're certain Walt Whitman said that. 100% positive. You have a feeling it's going to be a long day. Let's, um, continue on. And, um, I guess he removed his disguise for that moment. It wouldn't have been as epic a moment with all that silliness on his face, I suppose. Although now I'm imagining it, and yeah, the moment would be completely ruined. Let's uh, leave a surprise for the mailman, hopefully not involving pooping on desks. <laughs> Is it supposed to be screwing up like that? It's probably my computer. I mean, my computer is kind of messed up, but... No. How would he even... I mean, John is, like, exceptionally short for a 13-year-old. I don't know how he'd even get his butt up there. So, um, let's see if he left the mail in the car. I know I do that shit. <laughs> Awkward, dead mouse-like... <laughs> Harlequin head? Ooh, a box. The door is locked and your dad has the car keys. You peer in through the driver's side window. You don't see any mail, but you do see a green package. There is also something underneath it that looks like a slip of paper. Could these items have come in the mail? You don't see anything else that's usually in the mail, like bills and coupons. Maybe your dad forgot to take the stuff inside. Spy into the kitchen. Ooh. Kitchen window needs to be cleaned. My computer screen needs to be cleaned, but you can't see that right now. You try to get a gander through the kitchen window, but you can't see a whole lot. It seems your dad has been doing so much baking, the glass has steamed up. God, he is so weird. But you can see what's on the table just beside the window. It looks like the mail is there, including among it is a red package, some bills, your dad's PDA, and an envelope that appears to be suspiciously labeled with the Esperb logo. Could it be? Fortunately, the window is locked. Let's go back into the kitchen. <laughs> I really hope he doesn't see that. That's so disrespectful. Frosting's hard to get out too, especially if it's colored frosting. You have no other choice. You are going in. Clever disguise, it's time to work your magic. And more sound. Well, that's interesting. I really can't tell if that's intentional or if my computer's fucking up. It seems to be intentional, but it's rather um, seizure inducing. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> John's black dad sees right through John's costume. Son, you are so silly. Your dad sees right through the costume. You don't know what you're even thinking with this foolish ruse. You unequip the clever disguise. Your dad wields a dreaded artifact of confection. He stands between you and the mail. There is only one way to settle this. Mortal Kombat! I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to win this or not. I'm rather amused, though.
John, I think your dad is winning. <laughs> yes, let's um, let's take a third option. And abscond. You cannot abscond. This pesky guardian is blocking your path. You will need to engineer some sort of distraction. And now he brandishes yet another artifact of confection. The man is ruthless. You better brace for impact in the most immediately striking fashion possible. Equip disguise for defense. The beagle agus absorbs the brunt of the treat. Looks like Dad will enjoy the prankster's gambit in that exchange, as is usually the case. <sighs> I told you! If you had kept the wizard hat, it would have given you plus to int. And then you could have cast a... I don't know, spell or something. I don't know, Dad's main stat seems to be, um... Barding. Or something. I mean, he seems like a kind of person who would like bards. I'm pretty amused, though. Pretty amused. Let's get that python. You take the python and unequip the beagle puss. Everything in your silly desk is pushed back a card. The smoke pellets are ejected from the desk. Desk. Deck. That's a C, not an S. Yes, this could be just a distraction. You were... I told you. I told you. Told you ain't nothing was gonna happen. Ugh. Told you, John. Smoke pellets. Be gentle with them. Take the cake. When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one that knows how to yield. Oscar Wilde. Oh dear. And that book just is about to land on those pellets. This is going to work perfectly. Wise words by a man who likely could resist everything but temptation. The cake versus Colonel Sassaker's text out of your Silidex, and on to the smoke pellets. <laughs> Sassaker, you beautiful bastard. Now is your chance. Abscond! Oh dear. Now that Dad is busy placating the smoke detector, you can safely sneak away. This is so awkward. Take PDA. You snag your dad's PDA. Maybe later you'll switch the background image to something hilarious as a prank. Besides, it may come in handy later. Your spare capture log card is forced out of the Silidex and consequently integrated with the deck. You now have five cards to work with. That is a very roundabout way of adding new cards. Also, um, I've set off a smoke detector in my house once. It's uh, not nearly as hilariously entertaining, especially when you have a, an alarm system that announces in a very calm, computer-generated voice, fire, fire, when it's one in the morning and you're trying to cook something, and everybody is sound asleep. And you have cats, and the whole house is open air and echoes. Yeah, not cool. Alright, I guess we'll find out what happens next if John gets away from his loving black dad or not. See you guys later.